Howdy, y'all, and welcome to another episode of the Stay Creative Podcast, a show dedicated to highlighting talented artists and extracting from conversations with them tips to apply to our own creative practices. This show is recorded live weekly at the Indie Music Feedback Discord server, and for clarity and time, some content is cut for the recorded and released version. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation, check out the link tree in the show notes for the Discord link to IMF. Today, I will be talking with the multi-talented artist Starcry. He produces too many forms of music to list here, but today, specifically, we will be talking about how he crafts instrumentals, chooses vocals, and keeps his skill set growing. It is sure to be a great conversation, so stick around. just get into these uh, backstory questions a little bit. That's, that's, I'm sure you know that's how I like to uh, start start this. So uh, that being said, let's just talk about uh, where you grew up and, and how you grew up. Yeah, sure. I grew up around Knoxville, and you don't know Knoxville is, you know, a reasonably good size city as far as Tennessee goes. It's one of the one of the centers of the three divisions of Tennessee, Memphis and Nashville being the others. But my generation of kids – we're, we were really the first ones to be born in Knoxville. And other than that, for about 300 years, um, people had been around a place called Granger County, which is a whole bunch of nothing. Um, as a matter of fact, the big thing they're known for is uh, a tomato festival. No lie, you can look it up. Um, and uh, so, you know, I grew up with that kind of background um my my grandfather raised cattle not many it was really a hobby for him because he was retired you know i grew up running around fields yeah I, that's pretty much all i could think of to say actually yeah yeah that's <laughs> per- perfectly fine that, that's cool to know i uh i feel like uh tennessee is unique especially if you live close to one of our three you know cities basically mm-hmm. <laughs> because you you you're a short uh travel from a very big town right. You know, it's not necessarily a city. Like some some people, when they think city, they think, you know, so dense. Yeah, not so much. The sun. But <laughs> you, you, yeah, not so much in, in, in you know, uh, Nashville and, and Knoxville and places like that. Like you, even even in the, the densest the uh, uh, metropolitan area gets, it's still kind of agrarian. A yeah, little bit. yeah, it's kind of it's kind of an you know an odd sort of sort of thing. Like uh, you know, I know how to milk. Um, I know you know, I know how to harvest things like, and I, I, I feel like, you know, I mean, lots of people have that knowledge. It's nothing special, but I feel like there are places where it's easier to get that knowledge than others. That being said, do, do you still garden now or what are some other like hobbies that you get into uh, other than music? Obviously we're going to get into the music, but I like to know more about just how you spend your time your recreationally. My wife does more of that. Um, you know, music is, is essentially my only real hobby. Um, when work is happening it keeps me pretty busy um you know uh i think most people know this but i'm a i'm a high school teacher now um and there's a lot of things that kind of uh take up time there um you know apart from the actual work there are things like proms or or games or that sort of thing that um that take up a lot of take up a lot of um external time and other than that you know i've got a toddler so um you know we're playing trucks and trains and and different things like that um so keeps me pretty busy and and music's that's that's why i'm i'm super active between like midnight and 4 a.m uh is because he's asleep so i can actually do some stuff because if i try (laughs) before that he's going to come in uh there have been multiple times since i'm i'm trying to help some more people with vocals um where i've started to record something because i can't do that when he's asleep and he'll just come in here and just sit on the bed and start laughing at me uh, he's, he's ruined multiple takes. Um, but that's, you know, um, 
that's that's really most of what I do these days, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's funny too. I know um, uh, Mark, someone incognito. He's got a track where his his kid is like still on the track, <laughs> kind of kind of tucked, tucked in there. So so sometimes it's like that that oh, I got to redo that. But sometimes you can get away with keeping it. So that, that's cool that he uh he is without. Uh, he it's a son yes I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah he, so he is without you like sitting him down to teach him he is learning the the community behind music the skill the artistry that like goes into you just working with people online just just from watching you you know what I mean? he's asking more and more questions um you know so uh maybe you know maybe he'll be into the the music thing but uh We'll see. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, you run up, you, you teach. I don't want to know the specific school you teach at or anything. Yeah. That might, that might get you like weird uh, yeah. fan mail. We don't, we don't want to generate that. Just, uh, but uh, what do you, what do you teach? What's the subject? Um, I teach uh, English and German. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, you know, occasionally some other things, um, science fiction, ACT prep, stuff like that. Uh, but I'm actually kind of slowly transitioning into um, a role that's, known as instructional coach, which means um, I go around working with other teachers to kind of um, tighten up their, uh, tighten up their practice, um, you know, how to, how to best deliver the content that they're trying to deliver. So that's, that's pretty yeah. interesting. Is that something you had to do additional study for, or just a role that has kind of found you in your time teaching? No, it's, we had a, we had a change of administration that we had kind of let the, as a school, the instructional coach kind of roll, um, slip away a little bit for staffing reasons, things like that. Um, and when we had a, a change of administration, the new administrator definitely wanted to have someone in that role for a couple of reasons. Uh, my practice is good, and I'm apparently very good at talking to people without making them angry. Uh, uh, so um, that became me. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool, man. Got that tech. So another question I wanted to ask here, and just some some of the more uh, biographical portion of the of the conversation is: uh, Do you have any pet peeves? I think it's a fun question. It really it really annoys me uh, when people have. Uh, super strong held beliefs, quote unquote, um, that seem to be extremely malleable based on what they want their outcome to be. Uh, you know, basically um, hypocritical thought. This kind of this is this is you know this this sort of no, we have to act this way, and then completely acting the opposite. And everybody does that to some extent, I think. Um, you know, but uh, I. Think the best we can do is have wisdom to recognize it and be like mm, yeah well i think there's a there's a quote i saw once that simplified it to something like we judge ourselves based on our intentions and others based on their actions you know hmm. uh, yeah that seems that seems pretty accurate i i, I guess it's the it's idealism mm-hmm. uh you know crashing headfirst against <laughs> yeah. the reality in addition to your uh, like personal background i, I like to get kind of a feel for your artistic musical journey up to this point. And, and to me, that definitely starts with art that impacted you early. Um, obviously, we're all listening to music from, from yeah, our sure. mother's womb, you know, but what is some of the earliest stuff that you remember really uh, exciting you, either as a listener or as an early artist? The very first song that I ever remember hearing, uh, and it, it made a indelible impression upon me, is Kyoto song by the cure and something about, you know, it, it, it starts with a, you know, this kind of Asian inspired melody. Um, and it's pretty empty other than that in the beginning of the track. And that struck me as, I mean, it was a sound I had never, ever heard before. I hadn't heard anything like that. Um, and so that, you know, that was really, really strong. And then when I got a little bit older, um, my dad had a bunch of tapes, you know, cassette tapes. Um, and so, you know, I pulled out the Black Sabbath and Alice Cooper and things like that. Um, so, you know, my very early musical uh, musical induction is essentially The Cure, Depeche Mode, and then Black Sabbath. That's awesome. And it's, it's funny, too, because... As a vocalist, you know, I, I primarily know you as a, as a vocalist. That's how I first started to, to encounter your, your work. 
um, I can hear all of those influences and just the the, the variety required in a in a singer to be oh, yeah, a fan it's there. of those sounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's excellent. Moving up to now, um, I know you know those those childhood favorites, those early favorites, never really go away. But but what's inspiring you most now? Have there been any recent albums that have been really difficult for you to stop listening to? Um. You know, super recent, I'm kind of hit or miss. It takes me a while to live into music before I, I really start listening to it over and over and over and over again. Um, I think there are probably some tracks um, on Lady Gaga's new album that, that are going to do that, that I'm going to get there. Although, as a whole, eh, I'm not so sure. Um, you know, uh, newer stuff, uh, you know, lately I've been going, I've been going back a few years. Um, I'm looking at my Spotify right now, so I can tell you exactly what I've been listening to. Um, In Flames uh, re-recorded Clayman, the track Clayman from, uh, from their album Clayman, uh, just 2099, 2000, I think. Um, and so I listened to, I've been, you know, listening to that a lot and listening to, uh, to some Zito, which is a, uh, he's a German rapper. Um, you know, I, I've really been listening a lot for, um, for certain production sounds lately. Um, most of my music listening is, is in a sense work these days. Um, for my, you know, I listened to some Venetian snares recently. That was for, uh, my, um, break core, genre spin track that's awesome yeah I, I've, I've never uh i've never heard uh that band the venetian snares is what it's called venetian snares yeah yeah um i hadn't either i don't know anything about break uh but when i um when i drew that i started looking around and apparently he's he's like the guy for that yeah. another just kind of a <laughs> custom to you type question that i'd like to ask is uh you have to start a band with an animal the animal can talk and understand you. What animal would it be and why? I think I would choose um, a black racer snake. Awesome. Um, because black racer snakes are super protective. If you have a black racer snake in your yard, um, it chases off things that could be damaging and it just sort of hangs out. They're not dangerous in any way, but they look super scary. Yeah. Um, that's and that's that's how I've always wanted to be. I want to look super scary, but not be dangerous at all. Um, I'm definitely not uh, dangerous yeah, yeah. at all, but I'm not at the scary part yet. Uh, I see. You just gotta start start like giving yourself a haircut without looking. Yeah, that would pro that would probably work. Um, yeah. Wear a lot of leather. Uh, I'll just I'll just <laughs> be Rob Halford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Juice yeah. priest. Awesome. I appreciate that that answer and that insight. I, I feel like it's a it's it's a, amazingly customized answer you know like i didn't expect you to have quite the breed of snake ready to ready to go that quick. That's, <laughs> that's interesting and it's cool too that like you, you you've chosen this specific snake that's almost like a guard dog but not a guard dog it, yeah it is kind of it is yeah. kind of that's awesome <laughs> um so so i'd like to maybe get into some more of your specific music talk um if that's something yeah, that you're ready it. to do um and i have found in my own life and recently through these interviews that when I watch like a documentary or, or hear an artist talk about their art, I, I get some of their love for it. I, I, I learn how to listen to it the way they made it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something magical in that process. So I'd like Definitely. you to, to, yeah, I'd like for you to maybe tell me and tell us the folks listening, uh, what it is that you make in your own words. Um, generally, I, I didn't have an I didn't really peg it for pop music until I came here actually and everybody's like oh you're making pop music I was like no I'm not shut up you don't know me you're not my real mom uh, but then um, yeah I've I've kind of come to to accept that um, you know basically what I what I do uh, what I enjoy doing is taking a vocal track and then trying to make the best thing to support it that I can do that is yeah yeah and in, in the in the tracks that i listen to all week to prepare for this that is exactly what i would have said you do <laughs> um, good <laughs> like like I, without the try like i would say you you have absolutely taught me that pop music can be masterfully artistic uh in, in a way that makes the words essential makes the melody essential but also exists in this energetic place where the words could just be a melody played on a piano and it would still be an enjoyable piece of music 
it's really it, interesting that you say that because that's exactly how I how I think of it. Um, I when I first started putting stuff in, uh, you know, in the Discord, um, people would say that they you know they didn't really care for the lyrics which was not a knock at me because i didn't make them um <laughs> you know there but they'd be like i oh, just i don't know i don't know about the lyrics and i was like there was really a part in my brain that was like their lyrics That's i've cool. you know i've started to to pay more attention to them and try to and you know try to make sounds that that go along along with that um you know but in in a sense it's it's a you know it's a melodic exercise that approach uh is something that more people could maybe incorporate into what they're working on. I know for the longest time I had this chip on my shoulder against anything that was quote unquote pop music. And it sure. made me choose harsher sounds. It made me choose less enjoyable, more challenging things um, for the listener needlessly, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, so it's, it's knowing just how eclectic your work is. It is very interesting to hear how well you use these lyrics that maybe aren't, the most meaningful deep things, but you make such enjoyable pieces out of them. And I actually want to, before, uh, before we move on, I'm not trying to uh, rush us anywhere, anything, um, but, but I, I do want to talk more about what you use to make this art before we get into the specifics of the tracks. I know you are sure. an instrumentalist, but also of course you're using some sort of a, a digital audio yeah. uh, web webinar. I don't remember what DAW stands for. Anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, to talk to me some about your gear. I know we've got a good deal. Yeah, of gear nerdery around here um all right so i'm going to separate this into into two sections um which is gear that i have here and uh gear that is rona blocked from me right now um so uh gear that i have here that i've you know that most of the stuff that you guys might have heard i've i've used um i use logic uh i work in in logic um though you know uh, over time um I've used Ableton, I've used Nuendo, I've used Cubase, I've used uh, FL Studio, I've used Fruity Loops uh, when that was, you know, uh, FL Studio. Um, so I, I've tried to, uh, Sonar, um, I think actually the, the first major uh, EP that I recorded was in Sonar. Sonar was kind of terrible at the time, uh, it's probably better now. Yeah. Um, so I kind of fell into, into Logic, um, mostly because... I got bored um, at home and had a MacBook Air, so I started messing around in GarageBand and said, "Okay, uh, you know, GarageBand seems to work pretty well. Um, maybe step up to Logic." Uh, but I'm I'm a firm believer that every uh, every DAW has advantages and disadvantages, and you get mm. used to what you work with. And you know, there is no right answer there. Just get something and go. Um, sure. So uh, I've uh, instrument wise, um, I've got uh, I, I bought a small um, MIDI controller to use here at home, um, and I have my uh, Ibanez seven string RG, um, and then an Alvarez acoustic, which was super super cheap, but it is my favorite acoustic that I've I've ever played. That's the one that I I use for open mic. Um, hmm. That's most of what I've what I've got here. Um, and then, uh, at, uh, my friend zombie serial, who's occasionally here in the, um, in the discord, um, at his place, I've got a, um, a six string PV bass. Um, I've got a, a sparkle pink eighties Charvel six string guitar. Nice. Um, I've got a, a Schecter seven string, um, 5150 half stack with a, uh, Marshall 412 cab. Um, bunch of random pedals uh yeah, four, yeah. 49 key um midi controller um that's that's where all my real stuff lives and yeah. uh, now it's stuck there for the foreseeable but i've got enough to keep me busy here yeah for sure that's that's excellent and until pretty recently i don't think i realized you did so much guitar work so that's interesting that you you have such a variety of, of guitars and and, and uh, you said a, basically a pile of pedals and yeah, amp, you know? I was I was in I mean, the the very first thing I did starting at age 14, um, I was in, you know, kind of metal bands of various hmm. various types. Um, that's actually um, sort of in a in a very roundabout way. What what got me into the pop production in the first place, because I was making um, metal, mostly uh, kind of Gothenburg uh, melodic death metal style hmm. kind of stuff. Um 
which has a which is you know harsh in a lot of ways but also has a strong melodic component um and so when i did the when i did the electronic stuff i kind of moved the complete opposite direction i was like okay i'm gonna do the stuff that sounds the absolute prettiest i'm gonna be the best princess and build my castle out of uh bubble gum and sugar yeah uh, and so that's you know that's kind of what i did that's fantastic it's it's cool too that you in 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 some way you are living evidence that practice is translatable you, you practice yeah yeah you know, melodic metal on guitar and suddenly that ear for music that that understanding of how music works translated over to you know electronic and and pop in a, in a way that uh retained a lot of the, the mastery as far as some of your, your specific tracks i would like to start off by talking about one of the tracks that i found myself intentionally going back to quite often and it's funny because it was like the last one in like the little playlist i made myself in dlc but i would start there often because it, it was it was just a song that i really liked the feeling of um and awesome. that one is uh, rain uh, okay. And I, I know it's one of the ones that you were maybe we're just talking about. You know, you found a, a vocal track and you built a, a backtrack. What, what would you call it? Oh, uh, you know, I, I have no idea, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you built you built a, a, the musical half. I did the song. music. and artistically how you choose these vocal yeah. stems that you start all right so um with that one um you know i'm kind of always on the hunt for for vocal track that one really drew me in because um most of what i had been working with was um kind of full-throated in a lot of ways getting to belty kind of pop um and that was a very different kind of track uh from a vocalist named holly drummond um and it you know it felt a little bit more like quiet pop um mm -hmm. that i thought was was kind of interesting to to work with um and so you know i picked that as the as the you know what i was going to work with for a minute um and once i did that you know that was one where i definitely paid a lot of attention to the to the lyrics um and you know in the the subject matter of um you know rain and stuff like that um i kind of i'd already done that on a on a track but i i wanted to go with stuff that was soft and atmospheric because i was mm -hmm. thinking about um when you're when you're caught in the rain and the sound just seems to surround you it's it's not particularly loud a lot of times but it is everywhere um, and so I wanted sounds that were that were not very loud, that were not super in your face at all, but seem to seem to surround. So there's a there's a fair bit of panning. Um, there's I want to say there's four percussion tracks on there as well, um, doing different things at, at different levels of, of panning just to kind of give that, um, you know, that that bed um you know, I mean, to put it in in really metaphorical terms, which I I, did, I wouldn't have until just this moment. Um, if you're standing out in the rain, you can hear it hit the ground all around you. Mm. Um, that's kind of you know, I guess what the percussion is trying to do is trying to be all around you, hitting um, in in quiet different ways uh, to create that. Yeah, uh, that sounds so pretentious. I hate no, it. No, no, uh, I, I really <laughs> like the uh, just kind of the word picture of of. It, it, it helps me understand like the, the goal better so that I can actually enjoy the track even more. One, one thing that stuck out to me so, so much in the track, and this is going to uh, depretentify uh, our, our conversation immediately is there is a synth part in there that mm -hmm. feels so overarching. Like it, it almost feels like it, it, it's not even bound to the timing of the song. Like it, it's just this 
majestic, uh, almost ethereal, but also sharp synth part. And when it first came in, I thought, oh, it's just like when that spaceship flies over you in Star Wars. <laughs> nice. You you mentioned that like it it kind of has this this uh, I don't want to mar the words you use, but also I don't remember them exactly. But it has this quiet, um, not too in your face, while also being intricate and joyful. Yeah, um, and that's something that stuck out to me about a lot of your tracks. Is is a lot of times when I listen to the you know radio pop music, I feel overwhelmed the entire mm -hmm. time. Like I cannot identify the sounds I'm hearing. And, and even like there's just too many melodies going on at the same time. And, and I feel like, uh, you know, uh, I'm a dog who's about to bite somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that does not happen to me with, with your music. Like it almost feels like a live band playing pop instrumentation um, in, in a way that's sonically very enjoyable as opposed to overwhelming. And it still stays like absolutely danceable and, and, and exciting throughout but also crisp and clear and specifically the track uh, both and this, this is kind of funny uh, but let you go and let it go vocal tracks and crafting these uh, uh, the music half as, as we have uh, so eloquently mm. deemed it um, how do you start that like what is your process for making a track go so well I, I think a lot of it is um, as far as I know and there are probably others but the people that I've I've talked to on here um, work music first then then vocal mm. um, and I have the luxury because I'm I'm working with already made vocal tracks in a specific key i start with the vocal so that's always kind of the the touch point upon which uh i'm i'm trying to build um and so you know it's it's a little bit easier for me to think about what goes with the vocal because i'm starting with that vocal everything is already already has the vocal as its uh you know as its central orbiting point um and and that's that's really just down to uh, the fact that I work with those with those vocal tracks. Um, it it lets me think about the the vocal as the center of the song, rather than um, you know being an accompaniment to the song. Yeah, I see. So so when you listen to a specific track, like like you just pointed out, it's already ha it already has an established key. Mm -hmm. um, often, I imagine there's already a tempo that it is advised yeah. to be used at. Um, but how do you make just even the, the, the smallest choices of making it halftime versus, you know, four, four versus cut time and things like that? Uh, those are kind of moments where I don't, I, I often don't listen to the lyrics, mm -hmm. although occasionally the lyrics will kind of suggest something. Uh, if mm -hmm. you have a real soaring vocal, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's really good to, uh, you know, to go halftime because then you kind of create this moment of space that, that, then coalesces back um but a lot of times it's simply all right if we're um you know if we're moving this direction if we've kept a certain level of strength or lack of strength what do we what do we need here to round it out or to give um uh you know to to increase the moment of catharsis um you know as hmm. aristotle would say uh yeah. the yeah. the um the kind of leading you towards a feeling that you want the person, you know, that you want the listener to have. And that feeling can be different based on whatever it is. For example, in rain, um, you know, that, that catharsis needed to be needed to be understated rather than strong, which is why, um, you know, the, the major choice I think that I make in, in that track um, is to bring in the uh, orchestral elements at the end. It's, it's kind of the same thing, which is, which is basically that, um, both the subject matter of the song and the audio profile of the song is indicating, um, you know, understatement. So I wouldn't go, I would never go like cut time on that or, or something like that, because that, that would completely clash with the, with the very direct feelings that I'm trying to evoke in let it go. Um, 
you know that that had kept a relatively constant beat throughout so in mm-hmm. that in that last chorus section um i i switched up the beat um because the whole song is about making making progress i mean the the you know the the subject matter let it go um because it's um you know because it's it's talking about letting something go making progress moving on in your life then it really needed change throughout the track you couldn't do the same the same kind of track throughout um and tie into that to that idea that subject so um you know in that it wasn't so much of a it wasn't so much of a changing the changing the time or the beat but but indicating uh indicating continual progress through the track um that's awesome so those are some examples yeah yeah i i appreciate that again it, it comes back to uh what i realized most this week is is just how the artist can elevate um, genres that I have uh, looked down on, you know? Yeah. And, and you, you absolutely are, are, are doing that in a really enjoyable way that I feel like just having you mentioned Lady Gaga earlier in this conversation, I'm <laughs> yeah. thinking, wait a second, when's the last time I listened to Lady Gaga with these new ears of mine, you know? Oh man, listen to Fame Monster. I mean, you want to know like where my production instincts come from. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, there's an unbroken line from, uh, ridiculous 80s pop like tiffany um or uh stacy q or stuff like that um mm-hmm. then directly to uh lady gaga's fame monster and that kind of you know and that's mostly because the production on that is so empty yeah, um yeah and that's that's really what i'm trying to do that's my problem with chromatica saying is that chromatica is too full if you if you take song like rain over me and compare that to a song like monster or bad romance or alejandro or whatever mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> that empty production of the of the earlier you know the the fame monster stuff um is really kind of the the sound that i am um we, charitably we'll say inspired by uncharitably ripping off shamelessly <laughs> <clears throat> yeah yeah i i really like um the awareness it takes to to kind of come to a place where you realize that everything you make is just an amalgamation of the things you love anyway you mm-hmm. know so that's that's cool, man. I I will give in in honor of you, in honor of Starcry, DJ Eric, uh, <laughs> music maker. Uh, I will be listening to some Lady Gaga later today with my. Uh, I think wife. I think you'll appreciate it more, honestly. Yeah, I, I think I might. I think I might. I, I'm I'm grateful. Uh, but before before we uh, we move we move on, I love talking about the project you're currently like really invested in, and mm-hmm. and I could do that forever but i also want to touch on some of just your eclectic style yeah let's do it (laughs) yeah i've I've heard you touch uh you know uh, i've heard you send send out covers and originals and also you you have both through your vocals and guitar and lyrics collaborated with with me with several other people uh you know in imf like there, there seems to be like a uh a lot of elevational thinking in when you hear someone else's work. It, it might not be in, in the writing paragraphs of feedback kind of way, but you, you are always ready to say, yes, I can help with that, I think, and, and here's an idea, you know? Yeah, and, sure. And I, I like that, and you shared with me one of your, I guess, older tracks, Balder Bright. Oh, that was, a, that was the first genre spin track. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, that was... <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I was listening to these in, you know order of, of you sending them to me and it was yeah. i think the fourth of five you sent me the other four were wonderfully crafted pop tracks but they were not balder <laughs> <laughs> yeah which, which was awesome eclectic freedom where, where do you um what would you say is the secret to having this sort of uh expressive ability man i you know um i've just always tried stuff um 
you know, I at, honestly, where it came from at first was being an extremely arrogant teenager. Um, and, you know, hearing stuff, people would, you know, be like, oh, check this track out. And it would be something, you know, completely different than what I'd heard before. And I'd be like, Psh, I can do that. Um, you know, and then I, but then I had to own up and a lot of times I couldn't do it, but then I wasn't going to quit until I, until I could do it. Um, I'm, I, I would like to think I'm far less arrogant these days. Uh, and now it just comes from, um, let me give that a shot and not, um, you know, it comes from a place of complete lack of arrogance. There are a lot of things that I've given to people in IMF, um, that hasn't, that they haven't used, you know, they'll, they'll. I'll try something for them and they'll be like, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not really feeling it, but, and it, what it does is it, it will usually at least get them to the next stage of whatever it is they're going to do. Um, exactly. And, you know, so, um, you know, being able to say, Hey, I'm going to try this. And if you don't want to use it, don't use it. I don't care. Um, and truly, you know, truly not caring, um, has been, you know, an invaluable kind of, uh, kind of, skill for me um to just be like i'll give it a shot and then somebody be like yeah i'm not really feeling it and just being able to say okay cool well if you don't like that what are you thinking then um you know uh which is actually directly a result of uh of being an instructional coach just uh you know because a lot of times it is uh you know it's a matter of here's an idea and they'll say no not really and be like okay cool so what is the you know what is the next what is the next thing? So what that means for me to answer your question, what that means for me is to be able to uh, throw down on a lot of different, different things, um, you know, and kind of keep various musical skills sharp rather than just the ones that I'm using for my own personal stuff. I think there's a um, value in constantly almost sharing your practice. Yeah. You know, yeah. in collaboration, I have, grown more than in isolation for sure you know i know you said like there's a there's a secret in not caring but i when mm -hmm. i listen to your contributions i don't hear a lack of care i, I don't hear like apathy um i hear care i hear a uh, uh, presence and i hear true effort and you know and an enjoyability that that doesn't feel like apathy to me but i think maybe it comes down to not like stressing you know just mm -hmm not worrying about the end result and, and doing the thing because you love the thing you're, you're, you know, be, be it the creation of the music or the collaboration with others. Like that's what you're investing in. You're not investing in this right. end result, you know? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's a better way of putting it. It's uh, you know, it's separating the, the work from the worker, uh, you know, yeah. in a Marxist sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in a Marxist sense around here. <laughs> but yeah, so so t touching on some of that, like just some of the, I guess the, the spirit behind what you do, you know, it, it is both sharpening you and also contributing um, in, in a way that is uh, evident, uh, you know, to ev in everything that you, you make and share. Why do you make these things? What, what is your end goal, both in, in your own life and in the ears of your listeners? For me, my end goal is just to do it. Um, you know, I've been doing this for ever. I mean, I'm starting to get, you know, get into promotion and stuff. But um, as, I, as I said to somebody um, in, in IMF uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, look, man, I'm not I'm not going to blow up. Uh, you know, I'm not going to I don't have any designs on on being anything with this. Um, you know, as far as doing music, it's just something I've always had to do. Uh, I didn't really have a choice. I borrowed a guitar from my cousin when I was 13 because I thought it would be cool um, and proceeded to come home from school at about four o'clock and play that guitar until it was dark out every single day. Um, you know, I've walked away from music, not as like a, you know, not as a I'm done, flip up the table, break <laughs> windows kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I've gotten busy with other stuff and kind of de-emphasize music uh, at various points. Um, and then, you know, I just kind of come back to it. Um, when the, when things free up at some point, some, that part of my brain goes, Hey, why don't you write a riff on guitar or why don't you play with this synth or whatever? So that's why, um, as far as, you know, as far as listeners, um, again, you know, for me, it's just, 
giving something that's that's nice to listen to um you know i i i appreciate that that you say you talk about the artistry in it um but you know i look at at all these other people on here um you know that are that are doing art art i mean really you know things with statements like you know like you man the big middle finger to the system uh you know like uh you know there are people who are making who are making like real art and you know that's that's incredible um you know for me it's art but it's art of a different type it's it's art you know it's art as mimesis it's art as a, a reflection of um you know of joy and beauty and stuff like that um you know uh and though i give a lot of thought to what's actually going on um you know if it's nice to listen to uh if there's something that makes somebody say "Ooh, that's pretty or you know that's really cool uh that's all i'm really going for that's 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 all you know that's all i've ever wanted yeah yeah <laughs> man well you you're absolutely doing that and i you know i try really hard not to uh be contrarian to my my guests on this show but man i would say the middle finger to you the can be contrarian is, to me i i, I appreciate it you, <laughs> you you live closer than the rest so if you really get offended you can come punch me in the mouth it's okay uh, but but i would say that like there, there is absolutely some kind of value in the intense angry make something ugly middle finger to the system but a celebration of 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 the good things that's that's the reason we give a middle finger to the system mm -hmm. you know it's, it's so that more people can experience the good thing so without both, without a doubt yeah without both there's no balance you know if every band sounded like rage against the machine we'd all get really exhausted <laughs> and and i i am i am glad that we are both basically doing the same thing different ways you know i agree but, yeah i mean you know you're uh you know far more uh you know, far more eloquent about it than I, than I am. Uh, but you're exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I, 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 before we, we move on, um, I, I want to, uh, take a moment for you to share any practical tips or, or discipline advice, things like that, um, with, with everybody. Like I want to know you, you've kind of shared that you have to do a lot of your practice late at night after your, your sudden sleep. Yeah, sure. But what does that practice look like? How do you get the most out of a limited amount of time? Um, you know, for me, I'll throw a vocal, uh, in, into my, into my DAW. Um, and I just work by section. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do, I'll think, you know, okay, what kind of, you know, what kind of intro do I want to, I want to go with? Um, and, you know, a lot of times I'll kind of do it in piano. That's why a lot of my tracks actually start with piano. I'm trying not to do that so much anymore. Uh, but, um, you know, piano, uh, I don't know. I, I find that piano gives me a, a, a real clarity in the notes so that I can, I can be sure that my chords are working. Um, I can, you know, create variation in those chords that, that is going to work. And then I can switch to something else. Um, you know, other than that, the you know, and everybody on here knows this already, but, um, the best ad advice that I can give is be ready to fail. Um, it's the same advice I give my students. If you're not willing to fail, you don't succeed period the end. Um, so, you know, I'll, I go through a lot of things and, um, you know, Loam is always kind of razzing me about, uh, working on stuff, you know, working things up really quick. Um, but, you know, which I can kind of do now, but that's really a result of having failed so many times. Um, I, I know things that, uh, good Lord, am I Yoda? Uh, I, I know, <laughs> I, I know, um, a lot of things that aren't going to work because I've, I've tried it 15,000 times and it hasn't worked. Um, you know, uh, I, that's really just a, as you as you work more you work faster um i think um and it's that's really as a result of of just failing so many times and you know um that was you know i was having that conversation with koi joy in music school about um you know about performing and developing our mental middle finger um you know that's that's really just a matter of failure you know i've had plenty of live performances in front of people that have 
failed spectacularly. Um, you know, and every bit of that is just kind of, okay, well, let's, uh, let's try it again. Um, you know, uh, so I just, you know, now at this point, um, you know, I'll just sort of work through the track thinking about, okay, um, you know, here's this, there's this sound or this vocal change or this vocal shift. Um, I think I probably want to go this direction with it. And, you know, there are a couple tracks. I mean, the, a lot of the tracks that actually get released, um, I'll, I'll have within two days. Um, but I have a lot of stuff that I start that, you know, I'm, I've been sitting on for a long time. Um, because something's not working and I've kind of just got to let it sit until it becomes clear. So once a week I'll open it up and, and look at it and go, Hmm, I don't know. And go do something else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's cool. I, I like the um, freedom that that allows me to have. Like I, I, I've got so many like unrealized ideas that when I don't have an idea to start, I have an idea to work on, you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I, uh, I like, I like knowing more about the the tricks that people have learned when they have experienced failure. You know, when they when they have uh, fallen when, when that first Goomba in Mario has killed them so many times that <laughs> they know how to jump over it with their eyes closed now. You know, yeah. I, I like uh, the more uh, natural we become with with embracing failure. The more we can actually ex- explore risk. You know, yeah. That, that's, that's yeah. Cool. That there's a there's a lot of um, clean clean sounds in your music that I don't think would have gotten that way unless you were willing to start with something on like ugly and, yeah. and work it into something something beautiful. I like that. Um, so Thanks, man. yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I'd like for you to maybe just tell us where it's best to find you online. Yeah, um, you know, SoundCloud seems to get the most uh, the most traffic. Um, soundcloud.com slash star cry music um it seems to get the the most play um and it's it tends to have the the most up-to-date stuff that's where i put stuff first um other than that you know the the various musical things have um have my uh ep um but you know, I don't, I don't really release singles. I, I might change that, um, but SoundCloud's always going to have, have the stuff. Um, and then uh, YouTube, Star Cry Music, um, that has the, you know, the ridiculous videos that I make as well. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I, you know, I, in in my time researching for this, I didn't realize you had a YouTube, so that's something new for me to jump on too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome, man. Well, I, I have deeply enjoyed this, uh, this time with you. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, if you have anything that you would like to say to everybody uh, listening now or listening 100 years from now, what would you like to say? Uh, shout out to IMF. You guys saved my, my sanity. Um, you know, I was feeling pretty isolated with everything. Um, you know, I, I have I have friends. They live in Canada. Um <laughs> But no, I really, uh, you know, as you get older, your friends start to start to have their own lives. Um, and, you know, I've got really close friends, but I talk to them once a year, something like that. They're still my, my close friends, uh, but we don't we don't talk. IMF, um, you know, kind of gave me a lot of opportunity to make friends that, uh, you know, that I can talk to. Um, people like Lone, Ab, Stripe, you, Mark, um, you know, Pork Boy. Slacker man, you know, just anybody that you know can sit around in in general and, and spout a bunch of nonsense to, uh, you know, uh, you guys have been great um, to uh, you know to all the all the people out there in, in radio listening land. Come to IMF, stop being lame. Yeah. Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> now, hang on, let me let me let me properly McConaughey. That. You come to IMF, be a lot cooler if you did. Perfect. I do not want to <laughs> another moment of audio after that. Give me the episode, and I'm, I'm grateful for you, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. See ya.
Starcry was a really enjoyable and encouraging person to talk to. He has given me a renewed desire to listen to music for what it is and not what it isn't. The chip on my shoulder towards pop music is completely removed. I want to take along with me his approach to trying things, failing, and trying again. And of course, if I could capture some of his actual talent for myself, that wouldn't hurt either. Uh, but I am reminded that not everyone can be Starcry. Some of us are not as drawn to playing everything, and that isn't something to be ashamed of. If you play 20 instruments or if you play two chords on one instrument, keep playing, keep practicing, and keep sharing what you learn with others. That is how we all achieve more. I hope you check out the link to Starcry's music in the show notes. Uh, the music is worth it, but also getting a chance to connect with him would, would be an experience worth having, I assure you. Be sure to check out next week's live interview with an artist as active as IMF itself, A.V. He is a producer and creative thinker who brings a little bit of clarity and progress to everything he touches. Enjoy this closing track from one of the show's sponsors, Dream Eater. A link to their work can also be found in the show's link tree. I am grateful we have had this time to share today, and I am excited to share more very soon. Until then, stay courageous, stay curious, and stay creative. <laughs>